Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin at the tech tree because we've got some science to work out and I first of all want to make sure we're unlocking advanced science tech which has the ISRU stuff. I think I, I still don't know how to work with them all together we'll see but let's research that. Okay so now we're researching it we weren't researching it before and we still have enough for quite a few different things. I this unmanned tech has a lot of non-RP0 science. Um, maybe we should allow for that, I don't know. Because like even this double C seismic accelerometer is a non-RP0. I mean that's... and I don't know why this TAC life support air filter is. Is everything suddenly... no, no, things are RP0 compatible still. Um, <laughs> you always have to check. Uh, there are... that... that wheel doesn't have textures but there there are pack wrap parts there's the normal rover wheel there we might want that we do we haven't really put to use our existing I think we have some existing rover capability um, no actually this is the smallest rover wheel so we probably don't have rovers then again rovers have limited I mean you have to try and get them from one biome to another it's sort of a hassle you'd rather just send another lander at that point so that's something to think about though. Um, nuclear propulsion. I haven't really worked with the Nerva one, but why get the Nerva one when you could get the Nerva two? Uh, which has a lot more thrust, same ignitions, uh, costs more granted, and it probably has a larger entry cost. I wish the entry cost was somewhat dependent on what you had purchased before. That'd be nice. Or we could get our first Merlin, uh, though I think we'd have to unlock further technologies to get, uh, well, I don't know, because the Merlin has various upgrades and usually the upgrades are in further technologies. Forget about solids. <laughs> I uh, So yeah, I have some possibilities here. Not sure which one, I mean these are mostly stationish parts. We haven't really done space planes much at all, though there's your shell parts for you. I guess we can't actually do large space planes yet, we don't have the science. Well, we could get the RD, oh sorry, RD0120 and RS25D. I, I don't know if they give us straight to the straight to D or whether we have to go through the others. That could be good for like single stage to orbit. The thing I was uh, contemplating with the Nerva, for instance, is like something that actually launches and comes back down again so that we can recover it. It's very expensive. If we could do that, then maybe it'd be worth it. But it doesn't have that much thrust. This one has a lot of thrust, but I have no idea how much it'll cost to actually unlock it. Maybe we'll go with this first. I don't know, I don't see us using this these engines too much unless we make a shuttle or something of that type. But alright, let's research this. Okay. So I've queued up quite a lot of missions for our Voyager window and uh, we'll take a look at that in the build list. And that took a little bit of time so this might be a shorter episode because uh, I designed this ambassador. The ambassadors are more like the Voyagers, and so they're that kind of thing, but they have more delta V. They're on a rocket uh, less than a thousand tons on the pad, so yeah, a bit bigger than your Titan rockets, but still. Uh, Titan Shot 2 is a uh, slightly upgraded duplicate of the Titan Shot that we've already got there, and so it's got a mini lander uh, just in case we miss on the Titan Shots, and also if we want to land on a different biome. That sort of thing. So another uh, attempt there. Titan's the only one with an atmosphere, so it's the only moon that we can really do that with. Uh, Mapset 1A and Mapset 2A are mild improvements to the Mapset 1 and 2 here. So basically, what we're looking to send out right now are uh, Ultracom, Ultracom, Mapset 1, Mapset 2, Exo Moon Explorer, I think is also going. Um, Ambassador, Titan Shot 2, Ambassador, Mapset 1A, Mapset 2A. So I think it's like 10 launches so far. 
and if we can get done with building more of them by the time that we reach the launch window, which is in 236 days, seems like we could queue up a few more things. We might as well. So I'll look into that. But first of all, right now we're going to take out, uh, take care of the two Titan shots already underway. Okay, so here we are, and I did turn on ignore max temperature first, just in case. Uh, though probably since we've recently visited this, it wouldn't have been a big problem. Maybe unless this I don't. This might have been the one that we haven't recently visited though. So better to be safe. Okay, so we're gonna have our Saturn Saturn encounter in two days, and our periapsis seems a bit high, but we have a Titan encounter there, so that's the good part. And I guess that's why the periapsis is high, right? So this is head straight for Titan. Let's see if that's all okay. All right, so here we are in Saturn SY. Whoa! No, 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 no. Oh. It tried to automatically time warp to, I don't know, periapsis maybe? Whatever. Anyway. Uh, not what I really wanted to focus on. We do have a fair number of worlds here. Okay, so we we're currently on a crash course at Titan. Yeah, so that's that's pretty good. Pretty good. I'd say we should keep that, and then once we're in Titan, we'll just correct the orbiter out of that crash course. Or maybe we can figure out a way to make Titan help us. Let me take a look at that possibility. Yeah, I think the answer to whether it can help us is basically a no. No, it cannot help us get into orbit around Saturn at all. Um, the difference between one side and another of, uh, of Titan is basically a gap like this. So, we're going to have to do it the hard way. I don't know, can we just get a good little periapsis and have the little lander do the deorbiting? I don't know, we have to worry about communication as well. Well, we'll do it this like that for now. That'll be good enough. Okay, so we are on our way to Titan, and let's just add a maneuver in the SOI of Titan. Um, how far would that be from the periapsis at Titan? Because we need time to do things, uh, keeping in mind, you know, signal delay and everything like that. Maybe I should just make a maneuver node at this periapsis here and start doing things there. That'll be a few hours before we actually reach Titan. Okay, so we've got a temporary maneuver and that'll be in 75 days which should be covered by our food, water, and oxygen at our stations. No, not warp to SOI. That's what it was. Okay. We've got that, we can turn to the other Titan shot mission, which is not uh, Titan, uh, not aimed at Titan right now, but it could eventually hit Titan later on. Well, before we continue, it occurred to me to check on contracts, and here we have science data from the surface of Ganymede. We actually don't have many active contracts, we just have this science data from space around Jupiter, which I sure hope we can do in 25 years, and this one, which uh, I believe we are going to fail, Though we have 15 years to do it, but it's a tight orbit around Jupiter. Um, that's 89,000 kilometers. So it takes a lot of delta V to get a probe that tight into orbit around Jupiter. We'll have to see about that. It's possible, maybe with nuclear engines, but that's, well, I mean, 2.7 million. We might have to uh, take a risk on that one and see if we can do that with, uh, with a nuclear engine, but of a Nerva. But anyway, those are the two contracts we have except for the automatically generated ones. Uh, science data from the surface of Ganymede. I guess we could visit our Ganymede lander again and see if we can transmit something else. Uh, in any case, we should have another Ganymede lander traveling there, though I was hoping to send that to a different, uh, different moon. So hopefully we can just do a hop with that. Low resolution scan Ganymede we can't do right now. Science data from space around Saturn, definitely. And certainly in 40 years. Mm. Uncrewed Mimas landing, uncrewed Enceladus landing. These, these are a little bit trickier. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Could we send uh, Ganymede Lander to Enceladus and Mimas? I don't know if it's enough to take care of them. That's a heck of a failure, though. That's risky business. And that's risky business, too. 2.1. But at least Uranus, I think we're going to be doing. Maybe we should pick up the Uranus and Neptunes and assume that our Voyager window will take care of that. Not Pluto, though. That's not lined up. Yeah. Okay, uh, Uranus flyby. Neptune flyby. 15 years, though. You know what? I don't even know if we can get to Neptune in 15 years. I forget. The Voyagers mm, start a mission 1977, flyby of Neptune 1989. That's 12 years. So in theory, we could do it. I suppose we should try. Closer than 20,000 kilometers. Well, okay. All right, so we've got those. I think that's all we can, all, all we're planning to do right now. Obviously, these are actually, you know, human orbital to around low lunar orbit. That's pretty lucrative, and we can do that. Oh, right, the inclination is polar. That's why we haven't done that sort of thing yet. Okay, anyway, let's move on and go back to our Titan shot missions. Okay, so now we have a good reason to do some science here, though we should have been doing science anyway in Saturn SOI, though some of this we've probably already done. On the improved Titan shot, it occurred to me to use the Sputnik antennae on the little lander, since those don't break off. This uh, has Commutron 16s. I think they might be vulnerable in the, the atmosphere of Titan, so we'll have to see. Okay, so... Well, let's time warp until those experiments are done, and hopefully we'll fulfill that one contract for science data from space around Saturn. We have to watch out for staging. Of course, uh, we've got this signal delay, and we will need to stage before we can complete our orbital burn. That one's already been done. If the last one's already been done, I'll, I'll transmit it anyway to fulfill the contract. Oh, wait, we've got a good one. Geiger counter. Surprising we didn't have a Geiger counter before, but, you know, it might not have transmitted properly. Okay, and telemetry analysis also. So let's transmit telemetry analysis for 36. Let's see if it actually says that science, uh, data was added. Mm, yeah, 36 science added. All right. And let's transmit that Geiger counter. And so, yes, science data from space around Saturn is complete. Mm, that one just said done. So let's try that again. Maybe it'll be, maybe that's why it hadn't been done before. Because it can't be done, but we'll see. Um, Geiger-Muller tube, log radiation data. It takes an hour. Why does it take an hour? Oh yeah, that is more than an hour, wow. Okay, we've got a signal delay of more than an hour. Ah, it says science added. So it isn't uh, instrument specific, it's just sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Okay, so we got this one here. Why don't we pop on over to the Ganymede lander? Well, what? actually, you know what, let's just focus on this mission for now since we're here. Because jumping between missions is, uh, well, it's liable to cause the program to collapse. You know how that is. So, we are going to bring this into orbit first, and then worry about our Ganymede lander and trying to get that science after. Okay, we are now approaching Saturn. Uh, where is it? There it is! Let's see, let's see if we can see some... Uh oh, Moonport 1 food is running out. No, I think it's just because our supplies are so voluminous there. It's down to 10%. Let's see. Yeah, it's got 49 days. I'll take care of it while we're doing all of this. And we should already have a Moonport 1 resupply vessel ready and waiting. Okay, here we go. Passing through the rings. Okay, so I'm also going to unlock this tank ahead of time. 
Should be low over Saturn by the time we do those things. We'll see. Okay, settling the fuel down. And ignition. Hmm. I'm a little bit worried. Let me go like that to keep our periapsis a little bit higher. I forget where the atmosphere of Saturn is, so... Let's not get too low. Okay, and... Staging command. Well, we'll have some signs first, and then the staging is there. Okay. We will hope that that all works out. Once we stage, uh, our power situation should be much better because we're dumping the core. Does Saturn's atmosphere, like, bulge at the bottom there? And the top? No, I think the atmosphere is not shaped along with the obliqueness of Saturn. Saturn's fat, to put it bluntly. And it looks like the atmosphere isn't following that. That's what we're seeing. Uh, orbital telescope observations from just above Saturn's equatorial bands. Hopefully we'll get the data. Biological sample can be reset, it looks like. Let's wait until the previous experiment gets transmitted. Okay, we got signs for that. And here's the Geiger counter reading. Hopefully it'll work this time. Okay, we got signs for that. Telemetry. We got signs for that. And Geiger counter. Got signs for that. And temperature. Okay, staging has occurred, and so we just need to get to our node, which is at periapsis, and do the burn. We are recharging, but it says insufficient avionics. Hmm. Oh, but it doesn't seem to affect the engine, so okay. Oh, it's insufficient avionics while we're time warping, of course. Okay, well, this should be us making orbit. Ignition. Okay, well, there's a potentially complicating factor in that we've lost connection. I don't remember if I can shut down the engine without a connection in this version. It might have been lacking avionics that I can't shut down the engine and not having a connection I can. I think that's the way around it goes. So if we wanted to set Titan as a target, our, our ascending and descending node aren't in the best places. Um, nor for Iapetus, or potentially anything else. I think the, the goal was to actually... Hmm... Maybe one of these, like Enceladus. You know what, we should probably cut now if we want... Okay, good, it did shut down. Uh, we might actually want to boost up a little bit if we won't really want that Enceladus one. Yep. So, like, well, let's see. Let's do some long-term planning. Right now we've got a 17-day orbit. And I just want to boost up so that our descending node there meets Enceladus's orbit. Shouldn't cost too much. There we go. All right, we see a gap there, but that's not where we wanted. We wanted over here, and so I'm going to increase until well, it's pretty close. Well, one of the, will this one be friendlier? Tethys. Oh well, after 131 days, I could probably make that into an encounter, maybe. Yep. So we could do that. Oh heck, why not? Um, Tethys, hey. We'll do some science there. In 131 days though. But when else are we going to get something on a flyby of Tethys, right? So, yeah, 
let's plan for that. Add a new alarm. All right, we will go with that. All right, let's take a peek at the Ganymede lander to see if we can uh, get some extra science from it to fill that contract. Maybe one of those instruments that we didn't get to transmit last time because it was being iffy. Okay, well, first of all, let's try the instruments that we uh, didn't get any science from last time. I don't remember which ones those were, so I'm just going to go around. No, that one just said done. Let's try this one. In a pinch, we can try and move it to a different biome, but then we risk sort of causing a catastrophe and losing it, of course. And we haven't really gotten all the signs from this biome. Nope, it just keeps saying done. Okay, well, let's try and move it then. So we're in this cryovolcano region. Um, I can't really see where a um, different biome might be. Maybe if we go, like, seems reasonable to try and go north. Yeah, well, northeast is basically where we would trend if I tilt it this way, so let's go with that. Um, SAS is probably a bad idea at this point. Okay, so what I want is surface heading 0, um, hmm, actually heading 45, uh, pitch 90 is fine. Okay, let's try it. Oh, uh, Megjab has landing guidance. Maybe it can tell me what biome I'm headed to. When you say, oh, you know, that says, oh, wait, it says it's already satisfied that I've transmitted data from the surface of Ganymede, even though that data didn't re result in any science. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm not seeing it indicating a new biome, and I really gotta stop there if I want to land this safely. Let me tell the instruments. Okay, maybe I should start though. Oh, I should have started already. Oh boy. How did 20 seconds pass so quickly? Uh, okay. Um, that's not the best angle though. Oh boy. <laughs> this is a horrible place to land. If you can even call this a landing. We might be able to. Oi, 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 oi. No, no. Pitch. Pitch 90. Pitch 90. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, jeez. We're going to have some lateral velocity. Oh, ouch, 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 ouch. Okay, off. Off. Um, we're sliding down the hill. We're sliding down the hill. Um, can we... Okay, that... Might make it slow down. That's sort of the direction for the thrusters if you wanted to slow down. Man, this should be a different biome. Took enough trouble landing here. Okay, well, let's see. Analyze telemetry. I don't know. What else have we not done here? SAS. Yeah, that one. That was instinctive SAS activation. Okay. I think we've got everything there. Okay, gravity scan. Oh, uh, so cryovolcanic ice is a new biome. Okay, very good. It's not the actual cryovolcano. We were actually in a cryovolcano. Wait, temperature scan is old though. No, it is the same. It is the same. Uh, long pressure. And we're moving. We're moving. Uh, maybe Smart ASS can kill rotation. Okay, 
Well, we'll try the gravity scan again, but the previous times we haven't gotten any signs from it. And I guess we'll try and transmit it now, and if we get a contract, we'll just try again. Yeah, it just says done. Done. Okay, all right, all right. So, sort of a bust on the actual science gathering, but we fulfilled the contract. So, counts. All right, let's go back to the other Titan shot that isn't in orbit around Saturn just yet, and get it into orbit. Well, not get into orbit. Get flying past Titan first, and then maybe getting into orbit. We'll see. Okay, so we have an interesting set of maneuvers here. First, a minor correction because I just realized that the atmosphere of Titan extends to 600,000 meters from its surface, so 600 kilometers. So that's a little bit inconvenient. But also, uh, to allow for this maneuver here, which actually gets us into orbit around Saturn, it's a little bit complicated because if we take a look at our probe, we have to get done with this stage and this stage before we can really deploy our lander here. So um, the burn to make orbit around Saturn, which will take place in the SOI of Titan, and hopefully benefit from some of the gravity from Titan, but we're not doing it at Titan periapsis because we really need to work, uh, make sure our lander can land. Um, it's, I don't know if, maybe it is a little bit far for our lander. I don't know if it'll be able to get into the atmosphere of Titan properly like this. I'm a little bit worried that we're sacrificing our lander uh, in the hope of getting into orbit around Titan. It's complicated. Anyway, but let's do this uh, first maneuver first. And then we will do the rest. So it should be more efficient to do just do it right now. And all we're doing is moving our periapsis higher. The interesting thing is making orbit around Saturn, I noticed, uh, first, and there's our Saturn periapsis, maybe we should do it there. But does that lose us our encounter with Titan? But the interesting thing was that we actually get a Jupiter encounter out of it at a certain point. Or we did, oh, well, there it is. We could potentially use Jupiter to get back to Earth if we really wanted to, but that would sort of defeat the purpose of the whole thing. But you can see a Jupiter encounter there in eight years. So yeah, we could head back to Jupiter if we wanted to, but we don't really want to. Yeah, that's because everything is getting more and more lined up, I guess. Though going from Saturn to Jupiter is not really what the Voyager window is all about. It's from going from Jupiter to Saturn. So it's interesting. I wonder where the symmetry is. So that will get us into orbit. And you can see we would still have a thousand left. So we could flatten our orbit a little bit. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out a way to use the delta V that we've got constructively. But it's a little bit hard. I guess we're just going to have to do it in here. And we'll have to pre-release the Titan lander. In other words, have the staging happen queued up ahead of time. I suppose that's the best we can do if we seriously want to uh, do our lander mission. Okay, so that will get us into orbit around Saturn, so our orbiter will remain active and able to do things. Okay. I don't know how much Delta V the orbiter actually has to do maneuvers and maybe meet up with another moon. That's the goal here. But, alright, Saturn and Titan. So, we're going to head into Titan SOI, but before we do that, we need to do some staging. Uh, okay, so that's two days and seven hours. Our delay... Hmm, maybe I should... No, that... Unset target. Okay, one hour and 11 minutes is our delay. 53 seconds is the stage time. 
So let's say, and then what's the stage time of the next stage? Eight minutes, let's say. So before the node, we will want to stage, and let's have all this in the same stage. So there's that staging. And then there's that staging and that. That's basically the deployment of the probe. And it'll happen after the burn, which is after about 12 minutes. OK, I think this is a good time for the first staging. And after that, maybe in a little bit, we'll get some data in Titan. And we might as well try the Goo container. Come on. Which should be that. And then we stage and stage, hopefully. And we should tell the commutrons to pop out. on the little lander. Oh, uh, no, that happens immediately. Okay. We are retrograde around Saturn, which means we're going to be encountering Titan in the least pleasant way. There's Titan. It's got to be a lot of heat this way. We're going to be going very fast relative to Titan, aren't we? That's somewhat troubling. Actually, I'm also running out of time, so there may be a cliffhanger. We'll, we'll do some staging, and then maybe I'll leave it on a cliffhanger for the first time like ever. Okay, um, all right, we are in Titan SOI, and I do want it to turn to the moon for node. We are still in communication. And let us burn what we can with this stage. That staging is a little bit late, it looks like. Initially, this seems to be bringing us closer to Titan, but the maneuver nodes seem to indicate that it would end up further away. We'll see. Okay, time warping till the staging. But take a look at our orbital velocity, 15,000. I don't think our little lander is going to survive coming in like this. Ah, oh, failed separation. Oh, shoot. I obviously couldn't count on that. But at least we'll get some science here. Well, we should immediately do an extra staging then. Okay. But I don't think that'll be in time. Uh, that says done, but it didn't give us any data. Yeah, transmit the bio capsule. It says done again, and this is a different antenna, so it wasn't an antenna problem. It doesn't say that we got the science, and we didn't get the science. Hmm. This is really annoying. That might be a good reason to have a cliffhanger, actually. Aside from the fact that we had the staging issue. Oh, wait, we've got signs high over Titan. At least we got the Geiger counter. The Geiger counter we didn't get from other missions, but this time we got it. So it's not dependent on... It's not the antenna, it's not the instrument. It's just completely random. I think I came to generally that conclusion last time, but this reinforces it. Okay, that one we got the temperature scan. Orbital telescope. Okay, and telemetry analysis. Okay, we got science for that, and that one. Actually, we seem to be getting less science for the Titan ones than we did for Saturn, which is interesting. I guess it's because Saturn's bigger? I don't know. Well, uh, Titan might have more biomes, but Titan C's probably covers quite a lot of it. Anyway, uh, I think, yeah, let me leave it here, and so 
we we have a little bit of a situation we've got two stagings coming up and then the little lander is going to extend its commutrons and parachute's going to arm and then we're going to that's actually going to be the staging of the little lander the problem is that's already outside of the past the periapsis around titan so yeah that could change I mean, after all, we're doing a burn here. Maybe we'll be slowing down with respect to Titan, and maybe we'll get to Periapsis a little bit later. We will find out, and we'll find out next time. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.